Today's collectible spot, we are having a look at the Hot Toys Man of Steel General Zod MMS 21616 scale collectible figure. Spot's obviously been having a look at the other Man of Steel 1-6 scale figures. We've already had a look at the Jor-El. We've had a look, of course, at Superman. And no con collection would be complete without Zod himself. Um, even like looking at the original images of General Zod online, I definitely knew that this was a piece I wanted to add to my collection. Of course, if you're going to have the hero on display, it would be more than fitting to have the villain standing next to him. And that's exactly what I'm going to be doing. Before we, of course, have a look at the figure, the box itself, again, really is just a transitioning from what we got with Jor-El, with Superman, and now with Zod. The crest, the family crest, is predominantly featured on the front of the packaging. In this case, it's the crest of the family, well, Zod, Zod's crest here. Uh, down below, you can see that there is the image of, I'm assuming this to be Metropolis, and then we've got the the planet re retrofitting machine uh, doing its due diligence to destroy and wipe out and recreate Krypton. Um, it, it is a, a fantastic transition though from what we saw with the Superman box to what we're seeing with Zod. It's a really good companion piece if you were to ever have the boxes on display. The box itself does have a Velcro flap and actually just before we do that on the back of the package, of course, some warnings. Warning, choking hazard, small parts, not for children under three years of age. This is an adult collectible, not a toy recommended for ages 15 and up. Um, obviously, I would say as well, uh, above and beyond the fact that it's a small part piece, you know, a lot of small parts you wouldn't want to, uh, to be giving to a, a child in case they, they swallow it. Above and beyond that too, I would say too, this is a higher end collectible. I don't know if I would suggest even giving this to a child anyways, just in case something was to happen. You would hate to break it or you know have something happen to the piece. Um, so I would say, you know, this is definitely more geared towards an adult collectible. Someone that's gonna be, you know, displaying this uh, you know, on a shelf or in in my case, a glass cabinet. However, though, we take the side of the box and we open this up. There's a little magnetized uh, piece right here magnets on the sides fla side flaps there as well and we open it up to show Zod in a nice open window featuring the alternate head the several different alternate hands that Zod's going to come included with and then inside I'm going to bring the camera in so we can give all the credit required all the credit to all the hard-working people over at Hot Toys that put together these pieces and sometimes really speaking of heroes sometimes you know there are the unsung heroes that really create beautiful pieces like this and you don't get a chance to really uh, you know you don't really get a chance to let them shine so here's again some of the the people responsible for creating Zod with that being said spots gonna take a break and get general Zod out of packaging and when we come back we're gonna get a better look at the general Zod 1 6 scale collectible figure there's more heading your way guys don't go anywhere stay tuned as with the other Superman figures, General Zod does come with his own display stand. Although the one thing you'll notice is, despite the fact that it still has the same shape as both Superman and Jor-El, the crest once again has been changed, featuring the crest of Zod. And still, if we bring the camera in, you can see all the little... I always kind of feel like it looks like chainmail, but that chainmail look design of the crest of Zod. You flip around the front of the label, the front of the stand, I should say, there is the placard on the front showing Man of Steel, General Zod. Now there is a little bit of plastic. Spot generally just leaves it on there, but it just is there to protect the uh, the crest and uh, so that that placard doesn't get scratched or damaged. Superman also, General Zod also comes with a flexible, adjustable neck for displaying the figure. And on the very end, it's got the threading, the screw threading. You're just gonna take this and screw it into the base of General Zod. The end result is a display stand that allows you to 
Well, pose General Zod in ways that you wouldn't normally be able to pose him just with a standard Hot Toys stand. General Zod is a sight to be seen. As you can see, he is wearing his Kryptonian armor, um, something that he sheds near the end of the movie and is just sporting his, his black undersuit. Now, I thought initially when getting General Zod that this suit somehow could be removed. And even in the instructions, it indicates that you can't remove the suit. The suit is affixed to the under-meshed suit underneath. Um, which is kind of really the only gripe I could make really about the figure, is I kind of wish there was a way that through some way you could actually remove these, these armored components that we could have gotten just a straight uh, uh, Kryptonian suited uh, Zod underneath with the crest. In fact, even on the underside of the inside suit area there, he does not have any uh, cr Zod crest on his chest. It's completely a bare, uh, just a regular mesh suit underneath. But I mean, that would be my only gripe I would make about the figure. I kind of wish there was a way that this suit could have come off. Uh, if anything, Hot Toys really has a prime opportunity to re-release this figure, possibly with an alternate face, and giving us just the straight black meshed suit underneath with the Zod crest. That would certainly be a figure that I'd want to add to my collection as well. Let's look at Zod's face. The likeness is definitely there for the actor Michael Shannon who portrayed Zod. Right down to the scratch in the side of Zod's face the partially grayed goatee that he sports near, uh, well, further into the movie when they eventually arrive on Earth. Uh, all the paint is phenomenally done here on Zod's face. And also, I don't know if you guys know this, but uh, with Zod especially, uh, the, the face itself, the head is hand-painted. Each and every head that you get is hand-painted. Um, but I mean, really, like, if you look at, the thing is with Hot Toys too, like, when you look close on the face, you can see several different washes of color. It's not just straight one flesh color. There's about three or four different flesh colors uh, washed over one another. The end result, I think, is really giving us a, a fantastic likeness to the actor, and especially to Zod. Um, I'm sure one gripe probably made for the figure as well is the, the, face that, the fact that the face always has that grimmest look on it. You know, personally, for the for how much Michael Shannon is in the movie as Zod, a lot of the times he's angry. So this face is a perfect way to have Zod display. Because I'm even really thinking to myself, how many different faces would I want to have for Zod if I'm having him on display? Of course, you'd have the closed mouth Zod, and possibly you'd have him in a screaming fashion as well. I think screaming is probably a little too exaggerated for a figure that would be standing on display. This is a good men, I think, good meld between the two closed mouth and a screaming face, giving us something that on his own could stand very well uh, with the grimace, or if you have him displayed with Superman. Of course, bring Superman in, you can really see how the two work perfectly together. Uh, for the interaction that they actually have, and I'm glad that they interact enough in the movie, uh, to have them both on display together definitely is going to be how I'm going to have them displayed. Again, kind of wish that the armor could have come off so that we could have had maybe a final confrontation diorama between the Man of Steel and Zod, but still really love the armor on Zod here. And actually, speaking of the armor, let's get a better detailed look at the individual pieces of armor here. It looks like he's got several different... Now, I'm not really quite sure what these pieces are right here. They could be like flash grenades or some sort of explosive grenades uh, for Zod. But you can see, if I just move the arm out of the way here, how all the components are separate from one another. This chest piece is a separate piece, though it looks like it still connects to the sides of the armor. The shoulders are a separate piece that's actually hinged on the shoulder area here. Um, and then you can even see too, like where they've uh, they've put the arms in here, the bending of the arm, they've actually got kind of a quasi hinge going on here. It's not really a real hinge, but it gives you the indication that there is a hinge there. Um, there's a detailed look on the back. Again, you can kind of see the Superman meshed suit, the same suit that uh, Jor-El wore underneath his armor and the same mesh that Superman wears in his costume. Now really, depending on your preference, you can either have Zod sporting his unmasked look like you're seeing right here, or you can also give him the Kryptonian helmet that they wear when they first arrive on Earth. Um, 
this piece actually is a standalone head as opposed to something that actually clips over top of Zod's existing head. Um, I'm surprised actually they didn't go the route of just something that could be mounted over top of it, but really I'm kind of looking at this too. I would not want to think, especially for that being a hand-painted head, I would not want a a uh, helmet piece to go over top of that where putting it on and taking it off you could potentially scratch that paint off the face so having it as a standalone head makes I think more sense to me as well. To change out the interchangeable head simply just grab onto the torso of General Zod and being very careful pop the head off the supplied ball joint. Take the additional head that they've given you and even in the instructions too you'll see that the the helmet section extends further down at the bottom. Make sure that you tuck that inside the armor before you plug the head into place. And uh, just like that, you've got yourself Zod in the beginning of, well, uh, in his arrival to Earth. Really, for also that matter, if you had the available funds, uh, I would almost even consider getting a couple of these, uh, maybe leaving off completely the General Zod hel uh, alternate face for at least maybe two of them, and you could have like Kryptonian soldiers arriving to Earth with Zod. As a closer look to that interchangeable head, you can see that the way they've painted it, now again, it's a solid piece, it's not translucent plastic, but the way they've painted it kind of gives it that smoky look as if it is actually just a, it, it is that translucent film that's over top of their faces in the movie. Because as you can see, when watching the movie, like they pull, they pull it off almost like a, like a bubbled sandwich wrap, uh, but almost like a film, when they pull it off, it comes off the face. And again, the way that they've painted it, it gives you that look as if it is actually a translucent piece when it really isn't. Pieces that come with General Zod as well is the inclusion of the cape. The cape that he wears, I guess really in the beginning of the movie and even up to the point that they arrive to Earth, uh, he is wearing this cape. The cape is uh, included in a plastic case, keeping the cape nice and flat and preventing any wrinkles to the cape itself. To put on Zod's cape, what you're gonna wanna do is take the, the snaps here and unsnap from them from one another, just like so. And then you're gonna take the cape, flip around the back of the figure here, and you'll see these two sections right here, taking the cape. Now this could be somewhat difficult, but what you're gonna do is take the cape and flip it around, take these sections right here and tuck them, I don't know if you guys can see this, but take the cape and tuck it, take this section and tuck it right underneath that section right here. The cape section looped underneath, looped underneath and pulled out. I find the easiest tool to use for this is a, a pair of tweezers. Take the snap and the clasp and snap the two together, just like so. And you can see there's the bottom of the cape, there's the top of the cape, and the cape is looped through the armor. And then again, just doing it on the same side, or doing it the same thing on this side here. The finished result is a very seamless looking entry for the cape. Um, I kind of wish though it would have been magnetized or something like that just because getting the snaps around could be a little harder to do, but the end result is a really nice looking cape. It almost has like a, like a velour feel to it. It's very, very high end and actually it's, uh, I would say it's probably one of the nicest capes for a Hot Toys piece that I've seen. And that really factors in as well some of the Batman capes too. It's a really gorgeous piece and it flows actually quite nice too from the top of his armor. The cape is actually longer than the figure too, which gives us this nice draping effect when having him on display. The bottom of the cape is tattered and torn and jagged. So it's not a clean looking cape. It looks like something a general would have been wearing in battle, torn and tattered. And, uh, and flowing very nicely around the, the front of the figure. Somewhat light on accessories. He doesn't really have a lot, but you know what? The same thing could really be said also for the Man of Steel Superman, and for that matter, also Jor-El. Neither of them really had a whole slew of different accessories, but Zod, of course, comes with all the accessories you would expect to find with a 1-6 scale Hot Toys. Zod comes with multiple hands, but Really, each, each of the hands aren't that far off from one another. The real difference is you have more of just varying grasps of different hands. Um, he doesn't come with, again, any accessories, so he doesn't really hold anything. But I guess if you had Jor-El's 
uh, Kryptonian gun that came with that, that figure, you could probably use that for Zod here. Um, really, for me, these hands will only just serve as conquering, gla uh, grasping hands, which is probably how I'm going to have the general displayed. And as for pegs, well, Hot Toys got you covered there as well. You get two extra hand pegs should either one of the hands break, or if you just need extras, they've got you covered for there as well. Zod's hands are very easy to change out. Just grab the forearm and I find again, wiggling out the hand pre prevents, first of all, the socket from popping out um, and also prevents any breakage. Uh, but you'll see though how this section can be completely removed. It's a, just a free floating piece, but again, that's really about the only piece on Zod that is removable. The rest of the armor is completely intact and, uh, and, and affixed. Uh, then take the other hand, thumbsies of course go in and just again wiggle it and pop it back into place and that's definitely a better look for zod grasping hands looking as if he is going to destroy kal-el and take his home, his new home planet of earth um, just a, again a really great piece i again i don't it doesn't bother me too much that he doesn't come with a lot of accessories because really like these hands don't need to necessarily be holding anything. What they're doing now is perfectly fine. When it comes to Zod's articulation, he does have the balls right in the head, which as you can see actually flows and moves very easily indeed. Even a pivot left and right rotation back and forth. A lot of that is responsible because it's got a ball joint in the neck and a ball joint in the head. You get a lot of different poses and movement from the head area. When it comes to his shoulders, his shoulders are once again on that ball hinge socket, so they rotate out. Um, they do rotate forward and back, not really super hindered by the, the armor, and also the fact that the shoulder pads move out is also a big welcome uh, help as well. Uh, his bicep does rotate. He does have a double bend at the elbow and a rotation, slight pivot and slight rotation in the hand area. Torso, on the other hand, is a little more limited just because you'll see as you rotate the torso, all these individual pieces of the armor rotate as well. So I would say too, be careful moving as too much that you don't put stress on, especially these bands here, as as that is, seems to be the more the one thing moving the most when you move his torso. So I'd say do be careful when moving Zod's torso too much back and forth. For Zod's legs, again, his legs move forward and back, but you can see where the the suit connects itself to one another, so don't. I wouldn't move it too much forward and back. Uh, in and out doesn't seem to be too much of an issue, but forward and back, yeah, you don't want to be adding too much stress to these areas here. Uh, as for his knees, his knees are on a double bend, and his foot actually is quite nice. He's got a pivot and rotation in the foot, but then he's got a hinge right at his toe. Um, it's a little loose on this figure, but. Still, I like the fact that he's got the toe articulation like that. It gives him a lot of extra free moving uh, ways to position and pose General Zod. I gotta really admit, when I first heard that General Zod was gonna be the villain in the new Man of Steel movie, my first initial thought was, oh, come on, could we not have give, given us a new Superman villain, one that we haven't seen, that one, one that isn't Luther, Luthor, one that isn't Zod. But then when I've actually seen Man of Steel, and actually the more times that I've watched Man of Steel, uh, Michael Shannon really brought more to the character uh, and a very different interpretation of Zod than what we had gotten before Terrence Stamp's version in Superman 2. Uh, Michael Shannon really was a very honored, very noble General Zod, uh, but still had the very the ferocity that we saw him in, especially when he comes to Earth. Uh, this figure really captures the very essence of General Zod, and it looks perfect on the display right next to Kal-El. If you guys are certainly interested in picking up General Zod for yourself, I'm going to provide the link down below, right down here, down below, and you can head over to Sideshow Collectibles. Of course, you can't always go to any online store and pick them up. You can also go to a lot of specialty stores and pick them up as well. But Spot always likes to encourage going to Sideshow Collectibles, really for also the matter, too, that you can pay in installments. You know, if you want to get Zod, you don't have to pay a, a, an upright cost of the entire figure all in one go. You can pay him in, in, in installments. And then when you have all the installments paid off, well, Zod will be coming to your door. Uh, this is definitely a beautiful, beautiful looking piece. And really, as now we are establishing the DC Universe and Superman is now branching into, you know, Batman versus Superman and whatnot, it's 
really an interesting see to see the original idea of Superman Man of Steel and the characters that represented that movie. As Superman progresses further on, the mark that General Zod left behind will not be forgotten. And again, this is a great piece to represent General Zod in Superman Man of Steel. Today's collectible spot, we were having a look at the Hot Toys Man of Steel General Zod 1-6 scale collectible figure. Don't be going anywhere, guys. Spot's going to have more collectible spots heading your way. And as of course, as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.